two domains, social communication and restricted repetitive sensory motor behaviors. There are three subdomains under the first category of social communication. These include deficits in social emotional reciprocity, deficits in nonverbal communication, and deficits in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationships. Let's start with the first subdomain, deficits in social emotional reciprocity. This is defined as an abnormal social approach, failure to engage in normal back and forth conversation and reduce sharing of interests, emotions, or affect. Some examples here include a lack of empathy for others, an inability to recognize one's own emotions and emotions expressed by others, a lack of desire to communicate with others and looking through others as if they don't exist, feeling overwhelmed in social situations as well, late development of speech. In many cases, the first word is not spoken until between the ages of two and three, having echolalic speech, such as repeating the last part of a question or repeating commercial jingles or stock phrases. So the speech is not creative or spontaneous. A high pitched voice with an unusual rhythm and intonation, sing songy, for example, or monotonous, and trouble gauging personal space. So the appropriate distance between people. The second subdomain, deficits in nonverbal communication is defined as poorly integrated verbal and nonverbal communication, abnormalities in eye contact and body language, and deficits in understanding the use of gestures. Some examples may include a lack of eye contact with others, absence of pleasure through the exchange of body language, a tendency to have a blank expression when not comfortable with their surroundings, and a misunderstanding of what facial expressions mean or how to appropriately use them. The third subdomain, deficits in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationships, include things like difficulty adjusting behavior to suit various social contexts, and difficulty sharing imaginative play, or even making or retaining friends. As an example, a good friend of mine has a teenage son on the autism spectrum. He had a friend in the neighborhood for several months. One day, the friend made a comment that offended her son, and that was the end of the friendship. For individuals to be diagnosed with autism, they must exhibit evidence of impairment in all three of these subdomains. The second domain, restricted, repetitive sensory motor behaviors, has four subdomains. The first one is stereotyped or repetitive motor movements, use of objects for speech. Examples here include things like lining objects up in rows or flipping objects and engaging in self-stimulating behaviors like rocking, hand waving, arm flapping, spinning, toe walking, and head banging. Such behaviors are especially likely if the individual has moderate to severe levels of mental impairment. Examples include desiring sameness and resisting change, having obsessive rituals and adhering strictly to routines day after day, such as eating the same meals, wearing the same clothes, or taking the same route to school, and throwing temper tantrums when these routines are interrupted. The third subdomain is highly restricted fixed interests that are abnormal in intensity or focus. Examples here include an intense attachment to unusual objects, like a piece of string or magnets. Focusing on one part of a toy, such as by spinning the wheels on a toy truck. For more cognitively advanced individuals with autism, focusing on train schedules, calendars, or particular patterns of numerical relationships or like my great nephew, hyper-focusing on a particular topic like facts about space. Finally, the fourth subdomain is hyper-reactivity or hypo-reactivity to sensory input or unusual interest in sensory aspects of the environment.
Examples include indifference to pain or temperature, or an adverse response to specific sounds or textures. Individuals may easily become overwhelmed by external stimuli and have a desire to retreat inward. For individuals to be diagnosed with autism, they must, at a minimum, exhibit difficulty in two of these four subdomains. In addition, the individual's symptoms must be present in early development, and they must cause significant impairment in social, occupational, or other areas of functioning. The third area of symptoms involves repetitive play and a real need for the preservation of routine. Autism is in fact marked by extremes of very rigid behavior. Some children tantrum violently to any alteration, even minute, in schedule or routine. Now, Kanner called this an obsessive need for the preservation of sameness. It's like a kind of needing the world to be explicitly controllable. Any deviation cannot be tolerated. Now, to get a diagnosis of autistic disorder, children have to display very debilitating patterns in these three areas during the first three years of life. So it's an early onset condition. Now, in passing, Asperger in U Europe saw very bright children and adolescents who did have spoken language, sometimes quite sophisticated, but they typically had specialized, very peculiar interests and would not be able to handle or manage any deviation from these topics. Their language was sometimes stilted, not very responsive to others. So today we use the term Asperger's disorder to refer to youth or adults with what is otherwise called high functioning autism. In fact, these two diagnoses are almost interchangeable, although some contend that there are subtle differences. Both are part of what we call autism spectrum disorders. Indeed, rather than the view of half a century ago that autism was extremely rare, uniformly devastating condition, We've shifted in recent years to the view that autism occurs along a spectrum or continuum, just like the other mental disorders we've discussed in this course. Indeed, relatively few children have the full autism disorder with severe problems in communication and social abilities and play and uh, restricted interest. But a larger number have some degree of difficulty in several, if not all, of these domains. What was the initial view about etiology and causation? Kanner and others thought that emotional refrigeration from parents who simply could not bond with their child was the cause. They also believed the 